assalamu alaikum we have learned the mathematical modeling of mechanical systems with translational displacements we have also talked about uh, mathematical modeling of mechanical systems with rotational displacements here we have a mechanical system which has both uh, a rotational displacement as well as translational displacement and we want to obtain its mathematical model the procedure to obtain mathematical model for systems which have both translational and rotational displacements that procedure is simple for uh, rotational displacements we write the torque balance equations and for translational displacements we write the force balance equations uh, here when uh, a torque is applied to this shaft there is uh, an angular displacement in this shaft that angular displacement is transmitted over here here we have a rack and pinion arrangement this arrangement converts the angular displacement in this pulley to linear displacement uh, in this uh, rack uh, so this uh, uh, mass has a linear displacement x of t here uh, we have a linear uh, spring and a linear damper we want to obtain a transfer function between displacement of this mass and the applied torque so the procedure we already know uh, first step is to determine uh, linearly independent displacements uh, so uh, when this torque is applied to this shaft this shaft rotates by a certain angle let's uh, call this angle as theta 1 of t since this uh, element is uh, considered to be a rigid element so this end uh, of this uh, inertial element also has the same angular displacement that is theta 1 of t uh, here spring uh, we have a rotational spring and uh, both the ends of uh, a spring can have uh, different displacements so if this uh, end has a displacement theta 1 of t this end will have a different displacement uh, let's call it uh, theta 2 of t uh, furthermore, uh, this uh, uh, pulley is a rigid uh, pulley, so the other end of this pulley will also have the same displacement as uh, this uh, end of the pulley. So let's call this displacement as theta 2 of t. Next we have a damper and uh, the other end of the damper can have a different displacement than this one. So let's call it theta 3 of t. Furthermore, uh, this end of this inertial element also has the same uh, displacement theta 3 of t. Uh, the rotation in this pulley will produce a linear displacement in this uh, rack. So the, uh, this linear displacement x of t that is related with this angular displacement and the relation between linear displacement x of t and angular displacement theta 2 of t uh, that uh, is given by this expression. Here we see that uh, this x of t is linearly dependent upon theta 2 of t uh, because uh, this x of t can be obtained by simply multiplying theta 2 of t by a constant. The easiest approach to write uh, mathematical model for this system is to first uh, draw free body diagrams corresponding to each of these displacements. And uh, once uh, we have these free body diagrams, then we can easily write the torque balance equations and force balance equations. So let's uh, start with uh, this uh, first displacement, theta 1 of t, and uh, draw the free body diagram. Uh, if we look this arrangement from the right, this torque, t of t, produces an angular displacement, theta 1 of t, in clockwise direction, which is shown over here in this diagram theta 1 of s written is in laplace domain it is in clockwise direction uh, the torque applied is d of s and what are the opposing torques there is uh, an opposing torque due to this inertial element and that uh, torque is proportional to the acceleration in uh, this uh, inertial element that is uh, this is given by j1 s square theta 1 of s the second derivative of uh, angular position is acceleration and the second derivative written in Laplace domain we have to multiply it by s square. What are other torques which are acting on uh, this object? There is a torque applied by this spring. Here 
both the ends of this spring are rotating this end has angular displacement theta 1 of t and this end has angular displacement theta 2 of t to determine uh, the uh, torque applied by this spring on this object we apply this proposition that is initially we assume this end to be stationary and this end rotating in direction of theta 1 and determine the torque applied by k1 that torque is given by k1 theta 1 of s if this object is rotating in this direction theta 1 and this end is stationary the torque applied by this spring will oppose the direction of displacement that is it is opposite to the direction of displacement theta 1 and magnitude of this torque will be proportional to the angular displacement of this end the proportionality constant that is the spring constant and in the next step we keep this end stationary move this end in the direction of theta 2 determine the torque applied by this spring on this object so if uh, this end is rotating in the direction of theta 2 that is in clockwise direction then this spring will apply a torque on this object in clockwise direction and that torque is shown over here it is in clockwise direction the magnitude of the applied torque that is proportional to the angular displacement of this end so this is a free body diagram corresponding to angular displacement theta 1 of s we can now easily write the torque balance equation uh, that is sum of torques which are in clockwise direction that is equal to sum of torques which are in counterclockwise direction that is written over here this torque plus this torque written over here that is equal to this torque plus this torque so this term brought to the left hand side uh, there is a negative sign similarly uh, we uh, shall now draw free body diagram corresponding to this displacement theta 2 of t and that is done on the next slide looking from right this angular displacement theta 2 of t is in clockwise direction which is shown over here in this diagram and what are torques which are connected to this displacement there is a torque due to inertia of this pulley and that torque is proportional to angular acceleration of this pulley uh, that torque is given in uh, this diagram over here j2 s square theta 2 of s uh, what are other torques which are acting on this uh, object uh, there is a torque applied by the spring both the ends of the spring are rotating and to determine the uh, torque applied by the spring we apply this proposition if we keep this end fixed and move this end in the direction of uh, theta 2 then this spring will apply a torque uh, which will oppose the direction of rotation of this end and uh, that torque is given over here magnitude of the torque is proportional to the net uh, displacement net angular displacement in this spring in the second step we keep this end fixed rotate it in the direction of theta 1 if this end is rotated in the direction of theta 1 what will be the direction of torque applied by this spring on this object if this end is rotated in clockwise direction this spring will tend to rotate this arrangement in clockwise direction that is the torque that is applied by the spring will be in clockwise direction magnitude of the torque will be proportional to net angular displacement in this spring so that uh, torque is given over here similarly there will be a torque applied by the damper and again both the ends of this damper are uh, rotating we apply this proposition the torque applied by the damper is proportional to the velocity and these torques are given over here if this end of damper is kept fixed this end is rotated in direction of theta 2 so the torque applied by this damper uh, will be uh, given by this relation and if this end is kept fixed and this end is rotated then uh, this damper will try to rotate this arrangement in a uh, clockwise direction in the direction of theta 2 and that torque is shown over here is there any other torque which are which is acting on this arrangement so we see that when this pulley rotates it exerts a force on this rack what is direction of that force that is downward 
force exerted by this pulley on this rack is in downward direction. And uh, as a reaction to this uh, force, this rack and this whole arrangement exerts a force which is equal in magnitude to this force but it's opposite in direction and uh, that force is shown over here. Let's call this force F of T and torque due to this force is uh, this force multiplied by the radius of that pulley which is shown over here. Uh, now we have free body diagram and writing the torque balance equation we have uh, this uh, relation. Similarly we can draw free body diagram corresponding to this displacement theta 3 of T which is shown over here in this diagram. Uh, what are torques which are uh, connected to this displacement? There is a torque due to this inertia and that is proportional to angular acceleration in this inertial element which is shown over here. Uh, there is uh, a torque due to this damper. Both the ends of this damper are rotating and to determine the torque applied by this damper we can apply the superposition. So the torques which are applied by this damper are shown by uh, these arrows. So we have this free body diagram and here is uh, the corresponding torque balance equation. Sum of the torques which are in counterclockwise direction that is equal to sum of torques in clockwise direction. Uh, next uh, here this mass has linear torque and displacement x of t and we write the force balance equation corresponding to this displacement. Here this mass has displacement x of t. What are uh, the forces which are acting on this mass? There is, uh, there is a force exerted by this rack and pinion arrangement. That force is in downwards direction. And there are oppos opposing forces. Opposing force uh, due to inertia of this uh, element. Opposing force due to uh, this uh, friction. Uh, that is proportional to velocity. Uh, and opposing force due to the spring. If this element moves downwards, a uh, spring will apply a force in upwards direction. So here is free body diagram corresponding to this displacement x of t. Writing the force balance equation, we have uh, this relation. On the previous slides, uh, we had uh, three equations which uh, corresponded to each of these uh, displacements. That is theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. The second equation corresponded to this displacement theta 2 and had a variable f of s over there. In that particular equation, we can replace uh, f of s by this expression and uh, that equation is given over here. And this f of s can be replaced by uh, the left hand side of this equation. That is, we have uh, this relation. And over here, x of s, we know that that is related with uh, theta 2 by this relation. Therefore, x of s can be replaced by r into theta 2 of s. Uh, that is over here. And now by taking uh, theta 2 of s common from this term and from this term, this equation uh, transforms into this equation. So the three equations which describe the mathematical model of uh, this system are written together on the next slide. Here are uh, these equations and uh, we can write these equations in matrix form as well. Here is, uh, for example, the first equation, uh, this multiplied by theta 1 minus k1 multiplied by theta 2 uh, plus 0 multiplied by theta 3, that is equal to t of s, that is the first equation. Likewise, the second equation and third equation. Uh, to obtain a relation between uh, theta 2 and t of s, we can apply the Kramer's rule, that is uh, theta 2 of s is given by this determinant delta where this delta is determinant of this matrix, whole matrix. And in the numerator, uh, we replace uh, this uh, second column by the right-hand side of this matrix equation. Uh, now, expanding uh, this determinant, we have uh, this relation. It is convenient to expand this determinant by this second column. So, if uh, this determinant is expanded, we have uh, this relation in the numerator. And hence uh, the transfer function between uh, theta 2 and t of s that is given by this relation. Since we are interested in obtaining transfer function between uh, x of s and t of s, so what we can do is that we can multiply uh, the numerator of both the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation by 
r and uh, we get uh, this uh, numerator k1 multiplied by r and this r theta 2 is uh, x of s so this is uh, the desired uh, transfer function which relates the linear displacement of uh, the mass with uh, the applied torque